Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to create a unit test. Um, a unit test is a way of testing that your functionality works. Um, it is part of the uh, test-driven development uh, methodology. Um, it's one of those things that I very much like but have uh, not done anywhere near enough of and so a little while ago I implemented this in actual it fully works and fairly recently I had quite a difficult problem to solve and um, this was absolutely essential in solving that problem. So uh, first off let's start off uh, the essential part is unit tests. So if we just quickly run it here, um, and we'll see here's a whole heap of tests, and we pass them, and because they pass, they don't give very much uh, description. I'm going to show you soon how to, um, later in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, get more information about what's going on there. So let's go and uh, create, well actually first, let's pull up, let's pull up the documentation for uh, how to do it. So if we go over to here, we go uh, GitHub, actual, okay, it's and actual, I keep on abbreviating that too much. Uh, now, this time, um, normally I'd take you into docs and then programming. However, that's not correct this time because uh, all of the documentation, the programming stuff is all for the core stuff that sits in there. Whereas this is actually all provided by a module. Um, so this is entirely, I think entirely, uh, well let's t have a look. There's unit, yes, this is entirely written in actual. Um, so if we now go and have a look here, um, so we've got the basic using it stuff. Um, and then if you have a look, uh, here is the key. This is what says this is going to be run when uh, when you run this unit tests uh, parameter. Uh, and so then we just go and define some tests. So I'm actually going to leave this up here while we go and code this. Um, if, <laughs> being a little bit honest, I'm a little bit out of practice. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's why we have the documentation. So um, let's first create something that we're going to test. Um, so something to test.macro. Um, and this is something to test. Um, example, and we're going to uh, make it do nothing for now because this is going to, so therefore it will fail the test. So, example test dot macro. Okay, so. Um, some example tests and we're going to go example now the important part here is we need to put in this unit test so we go unit test and spelling it right would help cool fine um, so now we're going to define a test um, and we're going to call it sets variable boik um, okay inside that we're going to say if example a and we're going to say equals and we'll say nothing um, then we're going to fail test and we're going to say the variable was not set else we're going to pass test and we're going to say the variable was set ok so we have our first test. So now let's go and run this again. And we have a failure. The variable was not set. That's fine. So now we can go and uh, edit something to test. And we'll uh, take out that line now and we're going to put in set 
example A, and we're going to make it. Um, we're going to make it blah. Okay, and now we're going to um, we're going to save that, and if we go and run this now, this should now pass. Okay, it did not pass. Why did it not pass? Ah, it didn't pass because I didn't run it in the test. Okay, so that's my bad there. So if we go back over here and we go, we want to take something to test. Okay, now it should pass. It passes. Okay, that's fine. So, we're going to take this a step further. If something to test, so we're going to say set example expected result and we're going to make that ba ha 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 ha. Okay, so now we're going to take this and uh, we're going to say we expect I'm going to refactor this test very slightly here so we're going to take uh, this and we're going to put it up here um, that's fine and so we're going to take it out of here um, So we're going to say, okay, so first we're looking at, okay, has the variable been set? Now we want to actually um, make another test. Define test, and we're going to say, um, got expected result. And then we go, something to test, and we say, now notice here that I'm running this again. I actually don't need to. However, we need to make sure that um, whatever we need to make sure that these tests can be run independently of each other. So therefore, uh, that needs to be uh, that it needs to be run there. It needs to be run there. Um, and that is true with any unit testing framework. Now, as I'm saying this, something that I ha am not showing you at the moment is how to actually clean up, and that is actually, no, we should do that. Let's do that right now. Um, so we're going to say, once we're finished with this, we should be going unset, and then we go example A, like that. Okay, so therefore, and we'll take that, and we'll go and paste that in there, uh, because we ne we'll need it there as well. So that's fine. Okay, so now we're going to say uh, example example A, and we're going to say if it does not equal, and we're going to say like so, then we are going to fail the test. Um, the variable was not the expected value. Um, otherwise, we want to pass the test. Um, the variable was as expected. OK, so now we should fail the test again. <laughs> uh, why did that pass? Ah! Ah, okay. So, um, this is actually... Um, so, what happens here is you put in... Uh, the indentation works by... Uh, essentially everything that is below that, that is inside the indentation is actually created as a new macro and so then you can see this macro is called example test and then you can see here we get the dash dash 13 and you'll see that that correlates to this line number here so it's saying for this particular line this stuff gets called at, um, when uh, uh, when we this stuff is nested for that 
Okay, now uh, the way that it handles that nesting is that then we um, uh, put a comma in here and it says, okay, the next variable um, is something. And under normal circumstances, then that would just send a blank variable there. However, what's happening here is then example test dash dash 13 gets put at the end of that line and then this uh, gets past that example da example test dash dash 13 uh, gets passed as a variable and it says well hey um, we then go and run that function at our leisure um, and so in, in whatever way the indentation is actually needed so that's how that works that's why it's because I missed the comma there that it didn't work so now if we go and try that again now it fails okay which is good so now we need to actually go and modify our macro to uh, take that variable so something to test and bing 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 bonk and we're going to say global something to test and we're going to say we'll make that uh, we'll take it just the first variable there and now if we go and run it again we should now see a pass no okay why okay so Okay, so that's actually quite interesting. The reason why that failed is because if we come in here, uh, before we were setting it to blah, um, and so then we were always setting something, uh, whether we had a parameter or not. A parameter or not. Um, but now I have uh, taken, I've taken out that hard coding, and now we're only putting in whatever we actually set in there. So then that, that explains why this is failing, because we're not setting something. Um, so therefore, to make that set, um, we need to either, we need to make this, so it is actually going to uh, set something if something isn't set, um, or we need to adapt our tests to say, um, uh, well, hey, it has, to, it has to be matching exactly what we're setting. So ex matching exactly what we're setting is the second one that's failing. This one here is saying, hey, we should have, some, we should have if we run this function, uh, this macro, then we should have this variable set to something. So let's go and uh, let's make that the reality. So here we need to make this, uh, we need to actually amend this and say, this um, optionally takes um, it optionally takes a value um, and then we'll say uh, value defaults to blah okay um, spelt wrong I like that spelling okay so therefore we need to now go and uh, put that in here so if We need to take this. If this, and then we're going to say equals equals nothing, then do this. Else, uh, do that. Okay, so now we need to take this. Whoops. And we're going to now take yoink, and we want to make it boink, like so. Okay, so now this should actually make our first test pass again, and our second test should still fail because we haven't done anything to address that. So let's try it again. There we go, first test passed, second test fails. So let's go and work out why that second test is failing. So, if we now go, uh, no, we can't go and grab that because we've got the unset in there. That's fine. Let's quickly do a minus V and see if it illuminates anything. I'm almost positive it won't. We're going to put on two Vs. Now you notice we've got a whole heap of stuff um, come through here. Um, 
we're not debugging anything. Uh, we haven't put any debug output inside the test, so there's not going to be anything useful there. Um, let's instead come out of this, and we're going to go back into example test, and we're going to say debug one, and so this is debug level one. Um, the actual value was, and we're just going to put it in quotes just to make it um, easy to see. Um, but we ex expected boink. So we're going to say this, and if we come over here, and we're going to say this like so. So now if we go back and we run this again and we're just going to do one level of verbosity there. Okay, so that's saying we didn't get any value back. So let's see if we can work out why. So um, let's just check first. Have we got... Ah, look at that. I can see it right now. So what's happened is I've made a typo. So if we go and take, correct that typo in both places, and I don't appear to have made the typo anywhere else. So now let's go and run this again. Okay, so I've still got um, I've still got the failure, and you can see here now that we've got the default value coming in. So let's have a look at why the default value has come in. Now that is. That, to me, strikes me as not a problem with the test. This strikes me as a problem uh, with the macro. Ah, what is wrong with that? Okay, so let's, uh, let's just paste this right beside it and see if I've got any typos. So there's no typos there. Uh, I spelt all of that right. I've got the syntax correct. Goodness, what have I done wrong here? Let's just try this for a sec. Okay, that's good that that didn't fix it, because <laughs> that would have been a nasty bug. Um, yeah, that would have been horrific. Uh, what have I done wrong here? Surely it's not a bug from that. Uh, I need to invert these to actually test that properly. Uh, I was just trying to think whether it could work as it was, but not really. Um, so let's paste that in there and paste that in there, so now we get rid of that one, and that one, uh, and we'll just try that. This should not make a difference, um, swapping these things over, but I'm just checking to see, maybe I have a problem with equals equals that I need to fix. Okay, I'm happy that that didn't fix it, that is very good, and we'll just go back to switch that, okay, that's fine, so now we should be still in the same state. Okay, what have I done wrong? Okay, so we're going to put in, um, I was just looking to see, like, have I, am I having a brain fart or something like that, and I uh, uh, didn't get anywhere. So let's, um, let's put in a little more debugging, and we're going to say, well, um, the value we received is, and we're going to paste in, Bobber. And the full parameters are, and again, and this time we're going to take out that. Whoopsie. Okay, so now let's run this again. It really isn't... Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I know what I did wrong. Um, let's just uh, get rid of that because we don't need that at the moment. Um, so what I've done is um, I haven't actually passed the variable, so that's why um, it's not receiving it. Uh, so if we go and um, see right here 
Um, so what we want is to grab this like so and now we go back over here and now the test passes <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, so uh, let's take this another step further. Um, so let's say we want to um, run just these tests because, well, I, once you get a lot of these tests, they'll, they'll take a long time to run. So I'm going to put in here example. Actually, the, the formatting I'm using is that, so let's find it, that's fine. And we're going to go example boik, and we're going to go, actually, I don't think I need to do that. Boink, boink, boink. If I just go like this, and I go equals example, hey, there we go. So, um... There's that. Um, we can now take. We can now forget about the debugging in there, and we have uh, we have some passing unit tests. Well, after that adventure, I think I'm going to leave most of that in there because I think that'll be uh, a nice demonstration of uh, unit tests uh, actually in action. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, any questions? Uh, leave them in the comments below.